All right, I have the special privilege of being joined by Nate Brolson from CBS Mornings and NFL Today. And uh, Nate, the last time we talked, uh, we discussed how Justin Jefferson was on track to break every rookie receiving record in franchise history. All right, let's fast forward two years from that. He has broken every single receiving yard record in the first three years by any, any player in NFL history. You play receiver for the Vikings. You understand the receiver yeah. position. What's next for the young superstar? You know how when parents see each other at the park, and they say, oh, they grow so fast. Went from crawling and now they're teenagers. It happens like that. That's what I feel like with Justin Jefferson. We were just talking about him in the infancy stages of his career. I mean, literally just this young pup going out there with the speed and the length and the ability to snatch the ball out of the air and us talking about him breaking records. Fast forward to now, he's the best receiver in the game. I mean, it's a toss up. You could say Devontae Adams, you could say Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs, but you better men mention Justin Jefferson. I mean, he has it all. They say, you know, a five tool, six tool play, you play outside, inside, you can bring him out of the backfield. And when it comes to that one-on-one -on -one coverage, I'm taking him 10 times out of 10. So for me to see what he's doing now, as dominant as he is and being such a big part of this offense is special. I mean, the, the, the record of having so many 100-yard games passing OBJ, passing who we love, Randy Moss, mm -hmm. and most likely going to have the most 100-yard games through four seasons, like that right there just shows you how great he is. I'm not saying good, how great he is. Yeah, I think greatness is something that uh, needs to be stated uh, loud and clear, especially for Minnesota Vikings fans having a receiver like Justin Jefferson here. But, you know, this offseason, I'm, I'm not going to call you out, but I got to state the obvious. You say, you know, Cooper Cup is going into this year the best wide receiver in the NFL, and rightfully so. He had the stats. And the, the thing that, that backed up your statement was is how a, a receiver is only as good as his system. This system that Justin Jefferson is in right now, how has that made him grow? It's the perfect system for him. And, and listen, you're right. I did uh, base that off of the numbers. I mean, Cooper Cup hit the triple crown. We're talking yeah. touchdowns, catches, yards. I'm on top of that, helped his team win a Super Bowl. So it, it doesn't get much better than that. But I remember Justin Jefferson coming out and saying, I'm the best receiver. And I'm like, whoa, young fella, <laughs> you're going to have to chill out. Wait for these other guys to move out the way. Matter of fact, back up your words. And he did. But for this system, he's the perfect fit because you have a quarterback that can lean on him when he's going up against zone, when he's going up against man, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, double team, he'll give him a chance to go get the ball. But more importantly though, there's the run game. Mm -hmm. Me have Dalvin Cook, Alexander mm -hmm. Madison. You also have tight ends that can make plays. You have other wide receivers. Thielen is still really good. So what does that mean? There's other guys to focus on. So when you have a DB, whether it's the safety or the corners or even the linebackers peeking in the backfield because of a strong run game or the cornerback paying attention to another wide receiver because we do so much damage in the pass game, Justin Jefferson can focus on beating one-on-one -on -one coverage or beating bracket coverage. That's why this system is great. If he was just a really good wide receiver in an offense that didn't have any other weapons, I'm not sure we would be having this type of conversation. He'd still be good, don't get me wrong. Still be making yeah. plays, don't get me wrong but defenses will be able to focus on him a lot more. So this is just, it's so many things working at once that it's showcasing how great he really is. Yeah, I mean, you the last three seasons, this, this Minnesota Vikings offense has been a top 10 offense in the NFL. And now just fast forward to now, week 13, according to CBS Power Rankings, the Vikings are the sixth best team in the NFL behind the Chiefs, the Eagles, the, the Miami Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills, and Dallas Cowboys. For you, who works for CBS, is that too high, too low? Is that spot on? Like, how do you feel about that power ranking? I think it's fair. Okay. It's fair because of that Cowboys game. You know, I think that Cowboys game, it, it, it caused a lot of people to pump the brakes a little bit. I mean, right when everybody was all in, they were saying, Skull Vikes, let's hop on the bandwagon. It was such a big loss. Um, that it caused hesitancy for people to say, let's go ahead and crown them one of the best teams in the NFL. They're automatic contenders for the NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl. Um, listen, there's a lot of good teams right now. Yeah, the Chiefs are good. Yeah, the Eagles are good. Cowboys are rolling. You know, there's teams that we could point to and say, okay, the Buffalo Bills are solid. The Dolphins are really, really good. But what does that matter? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the Vikings just took a loss a couple of weeks ago. That doesn't matter. I mean, this is where... The, the heart of the season is after we get, a, get out of Thanksgiving 
and we get into the month of December, the meat of the season, and we try to figure out who these teams are because who you are right now is exactly who you're going to be in the postseason. So, yeah, I, I think it's a fair assessment of who they are and where they are right now. But like I said, it really doesn't matter about power rankings until the playoffs start mm. because when the playoffs start, that's a whole new season. That's a whole new season, and the goal is just to get there. And uh, I know you're a big Lion King fan. I know you're a big Lion King fan. I'm a big Lion King fan. You got the clothing line, Lion Blood. And uh, one of my favorite quotes from Lion King is, uh, I think it was Mufasa that said, believe in yourself, and there will come a day when others will believe with you. Why should people believe in this Minnesota Vikings team? Akuna Matata, my brother. Akuna no Matata. Worries. Well said. <laughs> um, I, I, that's because there is no worries. What is there to worry about? And that's the reason I said Akuna Matata. Are you worried about the defense? Ah, you got a safety with four interceptions. Harrison Smith is doing his thing. So Darius Smith, uh, he's, he's one of the tops in the league when it comes to tackles for loss. I mean, they're top, they're top 10, top five in takeaways with almost 20. So, so no worries on the, on the defensive side of the ball. On offense, is there any worries? The quarterback has proven that he could be a primetime guy. Remember when everybody's saying, oh, he can't win when the lights are low or we can't win on the big stage? Kirk Cousins has proved that he can win. You got wide receivers. You don't have to worry about who's replacing Randy Moss because there isn't a new Randy Moss. There's a new Justin Jefferson. Whoa, whoa, they might not have a running game. What do you mean? When Dalvin <laughs> Cook is cooking, the chef is in the building. They have one of the best running games in the business, backed up by a complimentary group of running backs. Oh, and they just traded for another lion to keep the theme going in Hudson. So, so, so like when thinking about this offense, they have everything that they need. Thinking about this defense, they have everything that they need. And a creative, offensive-minded head coach who has learned from some of his past mistakes and will go into the postseason with a really good game plan. My last question for you, because you just hit that right on the nail. Um, this New York Jets team, they're coming in hungry on Sunday. They got a young, hungry, uh, thriving team right now. Uh, Mike White, their quarterback, is the number one talking subject. So for this Vikings defense and this Vikings team, how do you get a win on Sunday? I'll tell you what, you better, better not take Mike White lightly. You know what I'm saying? Because he showed up for the Jets white on time. And the difference between the offense this week and a month ago is white and day, if you catch my drift. All I'm saying is he's a perfect fit. Mike White has this offense believing in themselves. The coaches are smiling on the sideline, and the defense is playing faster than ever. So you're going to have to jump on them fast. And don't give this opportunity, this offense an opportunity to get going. If the Vikings want to win, they're going to have to swing first, land a blow, start from the first quarter all the way up into the fourth, and then go home with the victory. Yeah, well, hopefully this Vikings team will knock this New York Jets team white out early, often, and right on, white on time. So, uh, Nate, appreciate your time today. Like, like, like I said last time, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on TV today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, because I love watching you, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> no, no, no doubt, man. Happy holidays. Yes, sir. Happy holidays.